hyper v right so i will give you a brief intro introduction on to that so that you will be able to work on both the hypervisors right then we will configure primary domain controller additional domain controllers child domain controller and read only domain controller so basically there are four types of domain controller which companies used to configure in their environment right so we should be aware of how to configure it why it is needed what is the benefit right so these all things we will discuss that why it is needed and how to configure and how to set up if if we are working in a real time production environment so how to set up what would be the geographical geographical location right because it it is not like recommended that we should put put all these of domain controller into a single location because let's suppose if there is some issue there is some disaster right so in that case in that case whatever the servers available in that location that will be impacted and whole of our environment will get down so it is always recommended that we should put our additional domain controller or we should place our read only domain controller on to any other location so that if any one of location will get down so in that case also our users will be able to authenticate our users will be able to make use of our domain controller so that is why we should put it into the some other location right then we'll talk about active directory ad the backbone of the organization how to set up active directory right then we'll talk about domain and ou delegation means obviously as a administrator you will be having control on to the server but you also place you also have to give control to other users also to your other it users also every time it is not possible the administrator is available so in that case in the in the absence of administrator you have to make sure someone has the right to your active directory so that he will be able to perform some operations on your active directory right but yes we can customize the right we can we can custom we will not give the admin rights to that particular user we can just give the customized rights that only users will be able to create the user account apart from that he will not be able to do anything that user will only be able to reset user's password apart from that he will not able to create any kind of group policy and all so that is called the delegation okay so we can customize and we can give the rights to our it users then r set remote server administration tool so to access access your active directory on your windows 10 laptop see if you want to access your ad obviously uh, every time you have to log into your server then only you will be able to access your active directory but i am saying with the help of r set you will be able to access your active directory whatever the features you are getting in the server same you will be able to get in your windows 10 laptop as well so bar bar you need no to every time you need no to connect to the server you just access your own laptop and from there you will be able to manage your active directory whatever group policy you want to create you can do it right user creation you can do it user password reset you it whatever things we can do in the active directory that same can be done on the windows laptop with the help of r set tool okay then we'll talk about group policy how to implement group policy how to make our environment how to make our systems more secure jaise kai organization hoti hai wahan par laptop mein pen drive access deny hota hai right then there are multiple type of security policies that can be implemented in the organization so with the help of group policy we can do that if let's suppose you want to deploy some software so that software can be also deployed by the group policy so we do have multiple templates available of group policies which can be applied as per the need theek okay. hai 
then active directory administrative center so this is the advanced version of active directory means uh, this is the this is like more graphical user interface right then dhcp dynamic host configuration protocol sabko pata hai how to get the ips automatically right so to get ip automatically we have to set up the dhcp server right and then we do have dhcp failover failover means if your dhcp server will get fail let's suppose there is some hardware issue in the dhcp server let's take an example let's take an example guys just a second right so let's suppose you have set up one server right and this server is basically the dhcp server right through this you are distributing ips to multiple client with the help of switch hai na switch se hi distribute hoga so let me set up one switch also here so this is connected to the switch right and this switch you can connect multiple client machines hai na let me take one computer right let's suppose this pc is getting ip from your switch and this is the dhcp you have set up dhcp server here right this one is your dhcp server and this server is connected with your switch and then switch is distributing the ip to your clients let me copy one more right so same way you can connect multiple pcs which are getting ip from your dhcp server but let's suppose this server will get down but let's suppose there is some issue with this server so obviously we will not be able to distribute the ip we will be needing one more server right so that is called the dhcp failover means if our main dhcp server will get fail in that case we can set up one more server we can set up one more server and then this server will start giving ips to the client so this is called the failover server so now if the clients are not getting ip from this server right oh, there is some issue here then they will get the ip from your failover server so this is basically the concept of failover and now let's suppose this system is getting the ip and same way this system is getting the ip from your second dhcp server so this is how it will work exactly neeraj it will work as a backup server exactly uh siddiq in case of 
production environment it would be the physical server but our case we will set up the virtual machines we will set up the virtual servers okay yes so this is how guys we need to set up the failover right once this server will get fail then through this second server we, we will be able to distribute the ip right and the third type is dhcp relay agent see from here we will be able to distribute the one type of scope only scope means uh, the number of uh, or you can say it as the ips that can be distributed to your client machine right we have to define the scope and under that scope we have to define the range of ip right so let's suppose if you want to distribute two type of classes means class a and class c let's suppose right we have created the scope with 192.168.1.100 to 192.168.1.200 so this is one type of scope right and the second will be let's suppose we are taking it as 10.0.0.100 to 10.0.0.200 just a sec 100 to 10.0.0.200 so in that case we have to set up the dhcp relay agent so that we will be able to distribute the ip from this range also earlier we can just send the ip from this range we can distribute the ip from one range uh, from one class of ip right but if we do have other classes also in that case we have to set up the dhcp relay agent so that our virtual machines or our client machines will be able to get the ip of 10 series as well to set up this we have to configure the relay agent okay now we uh, we will set up ftp file transfer protocol right and then web server if you want to host any application if you want to host any website in that case we have to set up the web server okay then we do have network load balancing cluster so in case you have a website right let's suppose let's suppose you hosted a website on a web server so in order to configure the web server we have to install iis feature okay iis feature should be installed onto server then only we can host our application right so this let's suppose we are hosting a website onto this web server right and now obviously it has its compute computation power and according to its computation power only it can resolve the user queries right means let's suppose there are number of users who are accessing your website there are number of users who are basically accessing your website these can be number of users okay so in that case obviously it has its compute compute power according to it only it can resolve the query or it according to it only it can uh, show the result just take an example of uh, netflix or you can take example of uh, hotstar also so you have seen whenever a match is there when if, whenever a india pakistan match is there so crores of people are basically accessing that hotstar website that hotstar application 
so obviously they have to set up the network load balancing nlb because server has it has its own compute power and according to its computation power only it can respond to the query of the users but if let's suppose crores of users are accessing my web server then it will get down it will not be able to respond to the query so in that case i need to set up the nlb so that my website will be highly available for the users and they will be able to access the services so in that case i need to set up one more server i will set up one more server if still if this server is not able to resolve the query i have to set up one more nowadays everything is on cloud right but if you want we can set up this infra in our own data center also so basically that is called network load balancing cluster nlb cluster तो क्या करेगा लेट सपोज इस यूजर इस सिस्टम का कंप्यूटेशन पावर लाइक इसका थ्रेश होल्ड वैल्यू पहुंच चुका है सीपीयू का 80 परसेंट एंड इट इज नॉट एबल टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू द क्वेरी राइट देन दिस सर्वर विल स्टार्ट रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू द क्वेरी ऑफ द यूजर्स इफ अगेन द थ्रेश होल्ड वैल्यू कम्स अगेन एटी परसेंट ऑफ द सीपीयू देन दिस सर्वर विल स्टार्ट रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू द यूजर्स क्वेरी मीन्स any how my users will be able to use my website this is called nlb and in case of if you are talking about on prem nlb in that case within a cluster we can add 32 servers at a time right if we do have 32 hard servers available with us so that 32 servers can be added in a cluster so you can just uh, add 32 servers in a cluster and then according to the load they will distribute their traffic so this in case we have to set up in case of web server if we have any web application if we have any web server so in that case we have to set up the network load balancing in case number of users are hitting our website so how to balance the load of the server so in that case we will set up the nlp right now profile folder redirection right then there are type of trust also whenever we are setting up the active uh, domain controllers pdc adc uh, cdc and rodc so there are some type of trust which are configured between them or even let's suppose there are two companies which are trying to merge jaise vodafone or idea merge hua right so in that case we can set up the trust between both the domains both the forest so that users of both the forest will be able to access the resources of each other so in order to make it we have to set up the trust first of all and then only we can move further it and then only the users will be able to use the resources right then we will configure nat also network address translation now see you already know that internet is only available on public ip right and in, or, in order to get the internet obviously you have to connect to your isp then isp will uh, help you with the public ip and then you can use it and then you can use the internet on your laptop but every time if let's suppose i have 10 devices if let's suppose i want to connect 10 devices so for all the 10 devices i need to i need to get the public ip yes i can get but i according to it i have to pay to the isp but the technique like nat we can use internet on private range of ip also company mein aise hi hota hai ab company mein to hazaron laptops hain so do we need to get the public ip for the thousands of machines no we can just configure the nat 
so that private we can set up the private range of ip in our local network and then uh, after configuring that we will be able to access internet on the private range of ip in your home network also you can see right so you will be getting one public ip onto your wan port right but your device your laptop your uh, mobile they will get the private range of ip you can check see see i am getting this 1.3 and this is the private range but still i am able to connect with you i am able to talk to you this is all because of nat and even you can check my public ip also so this one is my public ip so this public is ip this public ip is configured on my router and under that router nat is configured right and that is why i am able to use internet on my private range of ip also i will show you once right once we will start our classes now i will show you by logging onto my router i will show you how the netting is configured over there okay means the, uh, our server also can act as a router on router also on server also we can set up the netting on server also we can set up the vpn right so server also can act as the router then we have the uh, file and print management how to set up the uh, print server right majorly har ek company mein hota hai so ek central server bana ek central printer bana diya jata hai and that printer should be used by all your client right so in order to do it we have to set up a, a print management server okay then we have vpn vpn with nps and vpn with radius server right and then uh, remote desktop services data deduplication bit locker file server resource manager storage fsmo roles shadow copies distributed file system replication and namespace wsus the major topic wsus how to do patching in the environment how to send the updates in the environment right so we can set up the wsus server we can configure it and depending upon our need or based on the products that we are using in our environment microsoft products in our environment either it can be windows 10 it can be windows 11 it can be windows server it can be office it can be visual studio so whatever the microsoft products we are using in our organization so how to deploy the updates so that updates can be deployed by the wsus server windows server update services right then we have fsmo roles seize and transfer right then ad migrate a ad migration uh, migration or upgradation let's suppose if your active directory is running on windows server 2012 r2 and you want to migrate it to 2019 on to the latest one or maybe 2022 right so this is for what we will uh, we will talk about it ki how to migrate it right then adfs active directory federation services you have seen you are able to log in onto uh, multiple portals like adp or jira so with with your email id you can log in onto jira.com and you can log in onto uh, uh, that one adp where from where you can just download your salary slips and all so that is all because of adfs active directory federation services so we will configure that and then backup how to take the backup of servers how to restore the backup what are the types of backup apart from it what tools are being used in the organization so we will talk uh, we will talk about it also right so because see there are multiple tools available in the market backup tools are available in the market which companies are using nowadays which you, uh, which can be veeam backup right so is the most popular one but windows also has 
its own uh, backup tool that can be used in the server right then wds windows deployment services so how to install operating system in the new laptop so what we can use we can use wds so we can boot the laptops of our organization through the network itself right and then we can make it as a uh, we, first of all we have to set up wds and then by connecting wds our new laptop will be installed with the operating system either it can be windows 10 11 or any server operating system also right then we do have raid configuration nano server ad sites and services install from media ipam failover and file server in hyper-v then dns then forest and domain function level active directory certificate services nic teaming and last but not the least it's powershell hemant uh, will talk about wds okay so first of all these are the topics guys that we are going to cover right apart from this two or three topics are still there we will discuss it about right so this is the whole module this is the whole topics that we will cover under this right then how we are going to perform these labs i told you either you can use the kundan if it is not needed can you please switch off your camera that is distracting me actually okay right then how to set up the labs guys we do have two or three options available right first you can use vmware i always recommend you all or even in my previous batches also to use vmware because see whenever we are going for the interview right so every time definitely they will gonna ask whether you have ever worked on vmware right so i would recommend to use vmware but choice is yours okay so you can see i have created multiple virtual machines here because in my labs it is it may possible that i will be needing three servers at a time three servers should be running at a time so that is why i have created multiple virtual machines so that whenever uh, the server is needed right i can just turn it on and i can configure my practical okay so if you have 8 gb or 12 gb of ram in your laptop then i would recommend to go for vmware right because from here you will get the concept of virtualization even companies are using virtualization in their environment hope you have heard about esxi citrix zen right so you should be aware of the virtualization concept so that it will definitely gonna help you to crack the interview okay so first option is this and then the second one is you can log in on to networking labs once you will enroll you will get the access of these labs right and then you can log in there right so this is how the labs looks like okay so for here you need no to configure any iso and all everything is configured here you have to just turn it on just as your pe kaam karte ho virtual machine banaya aur usko turn on karna hai, that's it same way everything is built here you have to just run it you have to just start it and you have to take console of that server So this is for those who are not 
who do not have the good configuration of laptop available with them. Right, so just you can just log in and you can access these. Servers. Uh, yes. Sir, what do we need to enter in password? Because I was trying to access the racks yesterday, but I was not able to. Access. I am giving you in the chat. Thank you. Check your chat. Right. So these are this is the second method through which you can do or guys see. Anyhow, after this, you have to learn cloud also. Right. So I would recommend if you just if you have a laptop, then it is OK if you have good configuration. If you are okay, then you can configure it in your own laptop, right? But you have to learn cloud also because the second step will be cloud only. So to, you can configure your labs on Azure also. But for that, you will be needing the credit card. Right. So over there also you can configure your virtual machines, right? And you can set up the lab. So this is the third option. For Azure, I will be just helping you out how to create the virtual machine because see, we have a separate module for Azure, right? If you want to join, you can join Azure batch as well. Because see, once, once we'll configure the servers, once we'll complete our MCSA batch, so you should learn you should go for Azure. Right, so just in this module, I will helping you out that how to create virtual machines. We will not be able to talk deep onto it because uh, it is not possible for me to cover the deep topics because we have a separate batch for Azure. Right, just for our labs, for MCSA, what and all things will be needed, definitely I will help you out with that. Okay, so these are the three ways guys through which we can create our virtual machines. Any queries, any confusion? It will take around two months. The whole module, it will be around 50 plus hours. So you can take, you can take the example, like it will take 50, uh, like two months, yes. Any query till now? Any query regarding the topics? Or if you want to add anything else, you can uh, just do let me know if you want to learn any any other uh, topics so we can cover under this, right? So these are the topics so definitely we will cover, right? But apart from this, if you have any other topic, because I have covered almost the things uh, which is needed as a industry point of view. Okay, so already everything is included in it. Uh, Mughal 365 is not covered in this. So I'll be jumping out onto it. I will let you know how to uh, cover 365, Office 365. So this is the second module, right? Okay, so now, once you guys will be able to configure all these things, what will be the second step you need to follow? Yes, this class is for MCSA, but later on, once you will complete these all topics, what else need to be done? As a system admin, see, these topics are not enough. These things are not enough. As a system admin, if you are working in any organization or you want growth, if you don't want growth, then then it is okay. 
but if you want to grow in your career in that case you have to follow second step which will be first of all you'll cover mcsc right whatever the topics are there you will be able to cover it and you will, once you will be able to understand you can crack the interview also right after this you can go for sccm plus office 365 guys these are the things even go to nokri go to nokri portal over there also you will get if you are a system admin or if there is a job of system administrator right then they will definitely gonna ask about sccm and office 365 if you want around 10 to 15 lakhs of package right so once you will be able to cover mcsa modules go to sccm plus office 365 this is a combo batch which also we are running on the weekends right one batch is already running and if you want uh, we can create a separate batch for you all and you can join for sccm and office 365 after this you can go for azure 104 guys these are the things which as a system admin or even as a senior system admin you should be aware of or in if you want to grow in your career or if you want a good package in that case these three things you have to run you have to learn right and once you'll get a uh, good exposure on cloud and then you can go for devops or any cloud architect also cloud architect just ignore typo right and then you can go for devops so this is the road map of a system administrator even me also i'm working as a senior cloud operations engineer right i started my career from desktop support engineer you can go to my linkedin profile and you can check i started my career as a desktop support which is the lowest profile of the it but you have to keep update yourself i learned all these things devops i'm not but still i am on this part cloud architect part so i have knowledge of mcsa I, i in my previous organization i was architecting sccm also how to set up the environment and i was setting up the office 365 tenants and office 365 profiles and the exchange server and then i am um, i am azure certified also azure 104 certified and now i am working as a senior cloud operations engineer so this is how you can just keep upgrade yourself and then only you can grow in your career chota package pe kaam karna hai yahan tak bhi chalega koi issue nahi hai agar itna knowledge hai it's okay but if you want to grow then you have to do all these things and i would recommend along with mcsa you can join sccm plus office 365 also once you will be able to work on servers you will be able to set up the sccm labs as well right even if you are going to nokri portal right over there also you will be able to find that a separate sccm administrator jobs are there or even in the big organizations just a second give me a moment guys
okay let me share it again hmm. daily class will be of one and half or two hours okay so you can search here guys right even if you are searching for system administrator right so you see in system administrator they are asking for virtualization also and here you will get that uh, maybe they will ask for the ad they are asking for active directory windows server firewall router right and apart from this see vmware also they are asking vmware so that is why i would i recommend all you all to work on vmware pptis i will configure i will create a lab uh, i will create a classroom portal i will show you how you will be able to download just give me a moment I will show you how you can download the PPTs as well as the study material for MCSA, right? So here also they are asking for Exchange Server, Server Administration, right? And then MCSA, Windows Server. So thing is, you need to go through with this track to get a good hike in your package in your salary okay so first we will focus on mcsa and then you can go for sccm plus office 365 and then you can go for azure 104 right now how you will be able to get the PPTs and the study materials and interview questions and assignments related to MCSA. So for that, I will be going to create one classroom, Google Classroom. And this will be like this. Right? So you can see multiple uh, classes here. This is for my SCCM batch. This is for this is February batch. This is for my Azure batch. This is the MCSA batch, right? And under this classwork, you will be able to get these four options: interview questions, assignments, study materials, and PPTs. Under study material, I will be uploading the book for MCSA as well as for PowerShell, right? And then under PPTs what and all topics that we will cover right you will get the ppts here okay and then under interview questions you will get the interview questions related to server related to dns related to network ad and then dscp and the ccna okay and along with it you will get the assignments also so this is the compressed uh, file so under this around uh, 50 or 60 assignments are there that you need to perform and all are based on industry practice again and again i'm saying that i'm not going to just cover the topic right i am just helping you out how companies are doing it how companies are configuring it how companies are managing their infrastructure so whatever the experience i have gained so far I am going to share it with you all. Okay, so hope it is clear to all. Yes. Okay, now let's create one virtual machine, right? How you will be able to create virtual machines on VMware. So you can see I already have multiple virtual machines available. That is 16, server 1, 2, and then I do have Windows Server 2012 also. Right? And to create a new virtual machine, you can go, you can go to file and you, you have to go to new virtual machine. Guys, first of all, let's cancel it. We will be needing ISO images of the server operating system. 
or we will be needing VMware also. So you need to go to browser and you have to type download Windows Server on whichever flavor of operating system you want to work on, you can download. If you want to work on 2016, you can download 2016. If you want to work on 2019, you can download 2019 also. Okay. So let's suppose I'm downloading 2019, right? So you will get the first option of Microsoft Evaluation Center. Guys, these are, these, these are the evaluation version of operating system, which is activated for six months. Right, so we will be able to perform our practicals. We will be able to use the services of the Windows Server for six months. Right, just go to this link and you can download the ISO version. So this is the link guys, I am sharing it on your chat. Just download the ISO before coming to the next class. Okay, because you have to create the virtual machine then only uh, or even I would recommend to do the practicals along with me so that whenever you are facing any kind of query, you can just ask at that time only. Okay. So to download this ISO, you can just select 64 bit edition and it will start downloading. So it is around 5.3 GB. Right. Along with it, we will be needing one Windows 10 ISO also. Because see, once we are co configuring any group policy, right, we have to test whether the group policy is being applied or not. So that is why we have to set up one client machine and that client machine can be Windows 10, can be Windows 11 or it can be Windows 7 also. You know, that is just for testing purpose. Okay. Then what you need to do again, you can type here download Windows 10. Right. And this is the again evaluation center. So this is also valid for. Six months. OK, and you have to download this one uh, 64 bit edition, right? So this link also I am giving you to. So the first one, you can download the server 2019 and the second one, you can download the Windows 10. I already have Windows 10 ISO, so I'm not downloading it. Uh, I do not have 2019, so that is why I'm downloading 2019. After this, we will be needing VMware, right? If you want to work on VMware, then you have to download it. Or if you want to work on Hyper-V, then if you have Windows 10, Pro or enterprise version, then Hyper-V is by default available into that machine. But if you have Windows 10 home version, in that case, I will give you a script, right? You have to run that script into your laptop and then you will be able to, in, you will be able to get Hyper-V in the machine, right? So you can see I have already available Hyper-V in my laptop. So either I can co configure this virtual machine onto my Hyper-V or I can use my VMware. Right. So depending upon our need, we will be uh, switching up onto Hyper-V as well as on VMware so that we will get the exposure of both the softwares, both the hypervisors. Okay. Just close it. And now to download VMware. Download VMware. OK, so we will download the Workstation Pro. And from here, you need to download Windows uh, VMware Workstation. See, for now, it is a 30 day trial, right? But once you will download it, I will help you out with the activation code. Right, and you will be able to activate it and you can use it for the lifetime. Okay. So this is the link of VMware. Right. So guys, before coming to next class, 
just be prepared with all these things. These are the prerequisites. Okay. So once you'll download the VMware tool, once you'll download Windows 10 and the server 19, then we need to jump onto our practicals. And for that, first of all, we have to create the virtual machine. Right now, the resources need or the resources uh, needs to run the virtual machine will be taken through the base laptop. Right, whatever the RAM size you need to provide, whatever the hard disk size you need to provide. So these all configuration will be taken by the base machine, right? So laptop, if let's suppose you have 12 GB of RAM, so you can distribute your RAM size, like you can take 2 GB to one virtual machine, 2 GB to next and 2 GB to next. So this is how you can distribute your RAM size. Same way, if you have 500 GB of hard disk in your laptop, so you can use 20 to 30 GB to configure the virtual machine for server. In our case, 20 GB is more than enough to configure a new virtual machine. Okay, so let's see how to configure a new VM. So go to file and select new virtual machine. So we'll select custom and then next. Again, next. I will install the operating system later. Next. Now, what type of operating system you want to configure? Guys, if you are learning Linux from us, then you can configure Linux also in the VMware. Okay, it supports Linux operating system as well. Now, let's suppose you want to configure 2019 server. Then next, now you can name your virtual machine. Okay, so let's suppose I'm giving it as server 2019. 2019. Then next, and this is the location, guys, where actually our virtual machine is going to be stored. Okay. Then next, then we have the firmware type BIOS and UEFI. We have to select UEFI because let's uh, because we already know that the server can have hard disk more than two TB in production environment. Right. And in order to support the hard disk, which is more than two TB. We have to take UEFI as the firmware type. BIOS will can support only up to 2 TB of hard disk. But if we have the hard disk more than 2 TB, BIOS will not support. We have to take UEFI. Right? And then UEFI. Next. This is the processor. For now, it uh, doesn't matter for us. But if we, if we will work on the uh, production environment in that case we will be we have to distribute the cores right hope you have heard about that the server is 16 core processor 8 core processor right so according to that core we can distribute the cores to multiple virtual machine okay for now uh, for us it doesn't matter we are using only uh, the uh, laptops uh, CPU laptop core, so it will not uh, going to bother us. But if you are going to work on the real time server, in that case, you have to distribute the cores to the virtual machines. Then next, then you have to specify the RAM size also. Okay, so for us, 204 it is more than enough, means 2 GB is more than enough. Then next. And then the network type. So I will explain once we will start our classes, what are these network types are. For now, we are just going to take use host only networking because we don't want to communicate our virtual machine outside the network. We want to just uh, communicate inside virtual, inside VMware only. So that is why I'm taking host only. Other uh, network adapters I will explain later on. Now next make it as by default next so now the disk type if you do have ssd in your laptop then nvme will be visible to you if you do not have then you have to take sata 
Okay, I do have SSD. That is why NVM is available, visible to me. Okay, then next, because obviously the read write operation in case of SSD is high. Okay, that is why uh, I would recommend if you have and if you don't have N NVMe, you can upgrade your laptop. Okay. Then next, uh, we need to give the disk uh, hard disk also. So we have to create a new hard disk next and you have to give the size so for us <clears throat> let's take it as 20 gb okay and next next and finish so server 19 virtual machine is ready vm is ready but till now we haven't added the iso image right so i believe it is downloaded and we can now mount over dvd or iso onto this virtual machine use iso image file browse and go to downloads and select this vm uh, sorry iso image and then open and then okay so we are good with everything and now you can power on this virtual machine Okay, now next, install now. Okay, so we are getting standard evaluation option or standard evaluation desktop experience. Right, standard evaluation is basically the command based. If you want to work on this command based, then you should be aware of PowerShell. We will be working on this also later on. Once we will uh, work on PowerShell commands, right, then we will configure the command based soft, uh, uh, operating system also, right. But for now, we will work on desktop experience. Okay, now next. And I accept the license and then next uh, custom install only then next and that's it. So it will take around five minutes and you will be able to use the 2019 server. Okay, so this is your task guys. Let it configure meanwhile. So this is your task that you need to perform. Yes, Mughal, I will explain everything. Need not to worry. This is just a demo session. Okay, I will explain everything once we'll start our classes. Okay. Okay, so ta your task is you have to configure these two virtual machine. You have to make two virtual machine and one client machine on the VMware. Or if you don't want to work on VMware, then you can use uh, networking labs over there. You need not to configure any virtual machine, right? Everything is configured here. You have to just turn on VM and you have to do your configuration over there. This is server ISO. Right. And for Windows 10 ISO, same way you have to put Windows 10 ISO also. Okay. Let me show you. 
see this is my windows client 10 machine right and here also you can see i have mounted windows 10 iso see windows 10 iso okay so whatever the type of operating system you are configured according to that only you have to mount the iso right so in server 16 i have mounted server 16 iso see server 16 data center evaluation okay and in windows 7 it is windows 7 iso see okay and let's see what's going on it is 49 percent completed because see i am using ssd that is why the operation is fast just install this vmware and all right and in next class i will give you the activation key through which you will be able to activate the uh, vmware product meanwhile we are open for the queries if you have any query you can ask if you want to ask anything about sccm or any office 365 or cloud okay so everything you can just ask it will be from 8 p.m. Neeraj. 8 p.m. sir? Yes, 8 p.m. Sir, actually that would be an issue. Uh, actually, I have enrolled for CCNA batch also. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if uh, you are going to take the class from 8 p.m. and uh, uh, what is the duration? Two months. Uh, two hours. Two months. Achha, duration it will be two hours. One and a half or two hours. Yes. Two hours, sir. So uh, actually, if you start from eight p.m., then it will it would go to uh, nine, nine thirty or ten. Exactly. exactly. So actually, I have on enrolled for CCNA batch, which is already started at nine p.m. So it's kind of clash. Uh, Neeraj, in that case, nah. what we can do, I will discuss with team, and we can get we will get back to you. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, yeah. Anything else, guys, you want to ask? Any query? Sir, is this, yeah. yes, sir, is this demo class is available on YouTube? Yes, this is on YouTube as well as you will get it on your portal also. Oh, uh, sir, portal ka access kab tak rahega hamare paas? Jab tak session a class chal rahi hai, uske baad bhi For one year. One year. Okay, thank you. For one year, you will be able to watch all the videos. Okay, sir. Okay, so I hope I'm clear to everyone till now. So yes, Hemant. Uh, sorry, question type here. Chat box. Just a sec. Sir, Office 65 is software like Office or web-based application. Yes, exactly. But this 2007 and all these things, you cannot use this on the web. Right, Office 365, you can access every from anywhere. It's a kind of login we create. It's a cloud-based. It, it's a cloud-based tool, Office 365, no, and so, this, okay, and so, this, this is being used in the organization nowadays. Okay, uh, and one more thing. So we need a license for that, or it's free. You have to get the license, uh, but. Uh, in our demo, uh, we can work on the evaluation version, but mm -hmm. once we will go on to production environment, we have to get the license. So for an education institute is free? Yes, I it's free. It is free for six months, yes. 
फॉर एजुकेशनल यस फॉर लर्निंग पर्पस जैसे हमने अभी ये डाउनलोड किया ना एजुकेशनल सच लाइक यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड कॉलेजेस आई मीन टू से वी नीड नॉट टू गो फॉर द लाइसेंस नो इन दैट केस इन कॉस्टिंग वाइज आई एम आस्किंग नो नो इन दैट केस आल्सो वी हैव टू बाय इट मे पॉसिबल यू विल गेट सम रिबेट बट डेफिनेटली यू हैव टू गेट द लाइसेंस ओके ओके यस ओके सर थैंक यू no problem for man i believe it should start from tomorrow i believe but still you will get the notification soon okay okay i think this machine is configured this vm and you can log in on to it so one more question yes please uh Sir, yesterday I am installing a uh, Windows uh, okay. virtual VMware or uh, Windows 10. Okay. Uh, I stuck where uh, is press any key to boot. Something like that is coming, sir. At the starting when we are starting power on the server. Uh huh. Yes. So I am I am unable to press the key. What are the? Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. So in that case, just whenever it is asking for the enter the key. right just click on on the blank uh blank uh anywhere you can just click right okay after on clicking the you, under screen you can just click on anywhere right okay. and then you have to tap any key okay okay and okay. you will be able to boot it okay sir okay sir okay you now you have to give the super memorable password which you can remember <laughs> for me it is always difficult to remember the password <laughs> guys try to configure this virtual machine right and then from next uh, next class we will be working on the practicals right how to set up the domain controllers and all so we will be working on these practicals from next class so this is how we can set up the virtual machine this is how we can set up the operate uh, server mm. operating system